would be still producing antibody arms here. And we need to have him quiet down when he gets on the I was going to ask you to do this because you can still do it from there, all right? Uh, and it, because this is your one chance to tell him to sit down. I'm and coming. Quiet. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to stop him, so you're going to tell him to sit down and be quiet. Quiet down. I can do that. Uh, do it. Uh, sit down. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> sit down. I'll whoop you on the head. Whoop you on the head. Who do, who do we give the uh, trophy to? <laughs> Thank you all for that. That was pretty simple. Now, very simply, in an animation up here, I'm going to dramatize it a little bit. What is happening in your immune system continuously? Now we're way oversimplifying it, but it's an idea that here there's a virus, there's a bacteria coming in. There's a T helper cell population that the guards on duty. Mm -hmm. They activate, they activate B cells, B cells produce antibodies, antibodies are tagging that invading virus or bacteria, and then there are other cells that take it out. And this is continuously every moment, every second of every day. You're being invaded by a virus. Somebody sneezes near you. Right. You get bacteria, whatever. It's invading you. If your immune system gets a little bit overloaded, you start to get sick. You get a cold or something. When your immune system gets the victory, you recover from that. But your immune system is continuously, continuously fighting that. Is that the process that also leads to a fever? Huh? Is that the process that also leads to a fever to try to... Uh -huh. Because in fever, it's generating more and more cells to, to you know, the, the forces are being immobilized, immobilized here to fight that, you see? What's interesting in the immune system is that right from birth, those cells are set to recognize the foreign cells coming in. How could anybody say that this is not a design process? And, and what you do uh, when the B cell gets activated against, they also keep in reserve some of those antibodies. That's how you build up an immunity to certain diseases, you see? You build up an immunity. So if you get hit another time like that, you already have in reserve something to fight that so you don't get as sick or, or not sick at all because of that. You understand? Is this where vaccines also do their work? Yeah, vaccines come in and they pur purposely give you something that is uh, uh, maybe a virus, but they've treated it so it's not going to hurt you, right there, or bacteria, so that they mobilize your immune system against it, so they build up your immunity. And is this also where cancer work is being done by engineering some of these various and sundry uh, um, They're attempting to find uh, antibody type things. One of the things that they tried to do was trying to find antibodies that would target in on specifically on cancer cells and go in and then put some kind of a killing mechanism attached to the antibodies. So the antibody carries like carrying a bomb to the cell and blowing itself up. Okay, and blowing up that cell. Now, with cancer cells, it's very difficult because cancer cells, when they get attached and they have uh, uh, things on the surface to recognize right there, then they go and hide them so they, they get sneaky. Okay, so it's not such an easy, but these are things that are being worked on and these are kinds of things that are being done to try to help in, in, in fighting cancer and other, other disorders. And uh, uh, we can go on and on about that, but I, I want to go on here and bring this around to a scriptural uh, type of thing. And, and I gave somebody else another, did I give somebody else a Roman? So yes. 12.5, well, did I give you that one? I got uh, Romans 12.5 says, where is that rascal here? Okay. So, in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. That's 12.5. Yeah. And in 1 Corinthians 12.27, if you can find that real quick, that'd be good. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Okay? It's kind of, they go on this. What I'm trying to, I found this pretty neat picture on that. Uh, I think it is. Huh? 12, 27. Uh, 12, 27. You got it? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Okay. You see, we are that cell in the body of Christ. Right. Mm. 
okay? We are that cell over here in this finger, this ear, not the big toe, whatever it is. We are the cell. We are part of the body of Christ. And you know what? The blood is the perfect analogy for what Christ has done spiritually for us. We're the body. We're the cell in place. Well, what is that? Is it just like the blood nourishes the food? Remember that verse that we kind of got sick over again, right? It says we are to eat the blood, drink the blood. Drink the blood. You know, right there? If you, so whoever has that, go to verse 63 as well. And read that for me. If you can find 63. 53 says we are to drink the blood right there. But 63 says what? You got it? They are full of the spirit and life. Yes. You see, the life of the flesh is in the blood physically. And the blood of Christ is our life spiritually. You see, that's the uh, the tie end point right there. The blood of the blood nourishes us. The blood of Christ nourishes us as well. And just as the blood brings water to uh, to each and every cell. In John 4, 10, the scene is, is the woman at the well. Okay? And what does uh, Jesus say? If you ask me, I will give you living water that you'll have for, for you know, ever, for everlasting life. He says that in John 4, verses 10, and then 13 through 14. Now, we don't have to go all through there, but that's what the Bible is saying at that point. So... The, flesh, the blood of Christ is bringing us food and is bringing us water spiritually, just like physical blood brings us food and water physically. And the blood nourishes, and through the Holy Spirit, what does he do? He activates, he sustains, he guides. That's the Holy Spirit's job, okay, to do that. He's like the enzyme that goes in and, and, and does this. Let me see if I can find the passage I'm thinking of here in Luke. It's uh, chapter 12, verse 11. It says, Now when they bring you to the synagogue and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you are to say. He is acting like an enzyme to nudge you in the way you need to go or to state you while you're doing it or to do any of those kinds of things. There are some other verses in, in there. Uh, uh, in John 14, let's go there real quick if we can find that. John 14, uh, verse 16, and then it says uh, at that point, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be able to abide with you forever. And then in 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, for, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. Mm -hmm. And verse 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. He's acting like the enzymes in the blood. He's sustaining, he's nudging, he's guiding, he's directing in the way we should go. Without that, we're just dead in the water. Because the life of the flesh physically is in the blood, the life of the <clears throat> spiritual flesh is in the blood of Christ. And now, bad blood physically can lead to anemia. And if we feed on bad blood spiritually, then we become anemic as well. That leads to despondency, fear, worry, etc. If the blood physically blocks it, it blocks there, there. It blocks the blood flow to get to cells that need that blood. And if we are weak churches or weak Christians, what happens? We block the gospel of Christ to getting out to people who really need it. There's huge analogies here in, in that blood as to what that blood is doing for us in a spiritual sense, exactly what the blood does physically. The blood neutralizes harmful byproducts. Remember the toxins and things like that? 
And in the same way, Christ neutralizes life storms by bringing peace. In John 14, 27, he tells us, my peace I give to you, I leave unto you. Not as the world gives it, okay? He gives us the peace that we need. Christ's blood removes our sin. Just like physical blood over here takes away the waste from this cell in here and takes it and go, sends it away. And that uh, waste is as gone as it would be in Psalm uh, 103, verse 12, where it says our sin will be as far away as from east as is from the west. Amen. Amen? Amen. Yes. Blood cleanses continuously. It's constantly cleaning away, cleaning, taking away the garbage. And Christ's blood cleanses continuously as well from sin. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. These are verses you know. Hallelujah. Blood heals the wounds. And Christ's blood heals the wounds of sin. This was the verse we read earlier. Sounded pretty bad then. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't sound so bad now, does it? He heals the wounds of sin of sin. Blood is ready to handle every attack on the body. And Christ's blood is ready to handle all of the attacks that would come to us there. And 1 John, let me see if I can find it here. 1 John 4.4 4, it tells us you are, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. In Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, that's the armor of God to fight the wiles of, of Satan right there. Christ's blood supplies all of our needs that we need to fight off this battle, this satanic battle. Blood is ready to handle every attack on the body, but if you overload your immune system, you lead to sickness and death. The immune system is, is there to fight off the normal diseases that come. But it isn't prepared to handle an overload. You can overload your system and you did not. And in James 1.15, it tells you get into sin, sin eventually will lead to death. There is a solution, however, in 1 Corinthians 10.13, it says there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted, but that you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it? And in the next verse, he says, flee idolatry. Flee. Get out of there. Don't put yourself in a position where you can't handle this. But blood supplies all the needs of the cell physically. And Christ supplies all our needs. Philippians 4.19. By my God shall supply our needs to Christ Jesus. Right? Okay. And, and this is a perfect analogy. Now, one thing that's very interesting about the blood. The blood never says to the cell over in this finger, it says, oh, by the way, if you're in the uh, in neighborhood of the lungs, I'll be glad to give you a load of oxygen and take away your carbon dioxide. No, no. The blood comes to the cell. It never says to the cell, you get near the stomach, hey, I'll give you some food. No, the blood comes to the cell. It never says, when you get near the liver or the, uh, uh, there, I'd be glad to, to take your, your waste away and get rid of that. No, the blood comes to sin. And in the same way, Christ came to us. Hallelujah. He put off his crown. He made himself of no reputation. Became a man to humble so that he could bring this to us. <laughs> it's become the propitiation for our sin. And, but there's one thing. That cell, over in the finger, the ear, the toe, wherever it is, that cell has an outer membrane. Okay? And that outer membrane encircles that entire cell. In order for the food to help the cell, the membrane has to open and allow the food to come in. In order for the waste to be removed, that membrane has to open and allow the waste to come out. In order for the water to get in, it's got to open and come in. In order for the enzymes to work, it's got to come in. Okay? That membrane has to open and allow the exchange from the blood to come back and forth inside that cell. Failure to do so 
and that cell will die, sitting in the midst of the blood with everything that it needs to survive, and it will still die. Because the one thing the cell has to do is open up and open that membrane. We can only live if we accept the sacrifice. Remember what it says in John 6, 53, 54? It says we are to drink his blood. We are to take it in. In fact, the most often quoted verse, you all know this, quote it with me here, John 3, 16. It says what? For, For God, God so loved, loved the world that he gave his only, only begotten Son, son that whosoever believes in him should not perish and have everlasting life. We have to accept it. Amen. And if we don't accept it, we'll be like that cell that's sitting in the middle of the blood. And in fact, I have an animation to illustrate this. It's right in the middle of the blood. But it refuses to let the blood come in. And if it doesn't let the blood come in and do its job, then the cell just and dies and ends up in a devil's hell is where we end up spiritually. Hmm. Is this a bloody book? <laughs> yeah. But that's exactly what it's supposed to be. And, uh, in, in, uh, relative, in relative whoops. size, if you're talking about just a cell in the body, some they probably are different sizes for different purposes. But compared to the blood cell, is the blood cell much smaller than most body cells? No. So the times the, the other cells are, are bigger than the blood cells. Really? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking. The, that the, the, the blood cells would be smaller. Platelets are very small. Okay. Okay. Red cells, kind of in between. White cells can be varying sizes. But some of the uh, uh, epithelial cells, your skin cells, can be fairly large. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they can be all sizes right here. But the tendency is for these cells, uh, some of these I would think to be either at the size of the average of the blood cell or even big. Okay. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this, uh, um, this presentation. And I thank you all for coming to hear it. Plasma, yeah, and then blood cells. Yeah, what's in the plasma? For That's sure. what I said. There's, 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 there's all like, uh, <coughs> uh, glucose, cholesterol, proteins. Okay. Uh, there's uh, uh, all the waste and things. Some of the things that we, if you get chemistries done and uh, enzymes in there, there, there's a number of things that would be in there dissolved in there. The dissolved chemicals in that liquid portion. And if you put it in a centrifuge, the blood cells would drop to the bottom of the yes. tube, would they? Yeah. And they, in that state, would be dead? Or Not necessarily. Uh, uh, they, they